open wide. When I was little, my mummy took me to see the dentist. Willie came too. I made sure my teeth were really clean. Do you like going to the dentist? Yeah. yeah. Mummy said it was fun and the dentist was going to count my teeth. At the dentist, a nice lady sat behind a big desk. Hello, Tig, said the lady. That's the suckers that we've got, Tig. The lady said I would get a badge for having my teeth counted. We had to wait for the dentist. Lots of people were sitting on chairs. We sat next to a giggly lady. Can you show me how you brush your teeth? I showed the giggly lady how I cleaned my teeth. Oh, that's good. Mrs Kraken, do you want to come through? Oh. A lady asked Mrs Giggly, Come this way, please. Bye-bye, Mrs Giggly. Bye. One, two, three. In the corner of the room was a play shop. Me and some children played play shop. Four, five. I did lots of counting. I like the dentist. Her name was Rita. I've got some juice here that you need to gargle around your mouth and you spit in the bowl. So that washes your tooth and that dries your tooth. Rita showed me lots and lots of things. Things I'd never seen before. There's a slurpy sucker. A water shooter. Sunglasses, a polisher. It's a special, special fast electric toothbrush. It's a special electric toothbrush. Is that good? But best of all was the chair. And then right up into the sky. The chair could go up and down and back and forward like a ride at the fun fair. Right, I'm going to count your teeth now. This is my tooth counter for counting your teeth. Open wide. Please. I shut my mouth. I didn't like the tooth counter. In a minute, she said. Rita chattered and clattered. Hey, Tig. There's nothing wrong with the tooth counter. It's just a magic wand to help Rita with her counting. You'll never know how many teeth you have until you open your mouth. Opening your mouth is as easy as yawning. <sighs> Opening your mouth is as easy as eating a plum. Opening your mouth is as easy as laughing. Ha 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 ha! Okay, I said. I'm just going to put my visor on. OK, Tig, open wide for me and we can count these teeth. Open wide, said Rita. Open wide. Rita counted my teeth with her magic Whee! wand. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You've got 20 teeth in there. <gasps> I saw the other you spider. Brave. The lady at the desk gave me my badge. And Willie has a stick. Of course he can. Oh, there you go. Well done. I wanted a badge for Willie too. I like the dentist. Willie likes the dentist too. I love Willie. When I was little, I went to play with my friend Belle. Hello, how are you? Willie came too. Not at all. Belle's house was big. There were lots and lots of rooms. We went exploring. There was a staircase to go up and down. There was a garden too. 
We saw Belle's big sister, Ruby. Ruby jumped on the trampoline. Belle showed me lots of places to hide and jump out. Then we played hide and jump out. Belle had a little brother called Finny. I played cards with Finny. Belle had a mummy called Anne. Anne was kind. She gave us a drink and a biscuit. <coughs> Belle had a big sister called Lottie. Lottie had funny clothes. And fancy shoes. Me and Belle dressed up. Are you trying on my clothes? Lottie laughed. <laughs> Mummy came to take me home. No, I said. No. And I ran away with Belle and Willie to hide. And said to Mummy I could stay for lunch. Okay, have all the time. Bye. Bye. Hooray! Yay! I like being at Belle's house. Look at this, boys and girls. History's never always the way you think it's going to be. At lunchtime, Anne made an apple pie. A bit more. Belle said apple pie was her favourite. You do? I said apple pie was my favourite too. Oh dear, said Anne. Daddy's going to miss the apple pie. Tell me you think it's nice. Oh, I thought. I didn't know Daddy was coming to lunch. Daddy's home. Hi, guys. Hello, Tink. A man came and sat at the table. The man didn't look like a daddy. The man had hair all over his face. Ooh, apple pie. Special treat because Tink's here. Mm. The man looked like a bear. I didn't like Belle's daddy. I didn't like my apple pie. I wanted to go home. Hey, Tink, not all daddies look like your daddy. This daddy looks different. This daddy has a beard. This daddy's not fierce. He's just a bit hairy like a big friendly teddy bear. He doesn't look like a friendly teddy bear. Then just imagine he is a big friendly teddy bear. Look at him. Blink. And ting! He's a big friendly teddy bear. I looked, blinked and ting. Belle's daddy was a big, friendly teddy. Then I thought, how could Belle's daddy eat his apple pie if he's only a teddy? Poor Belle's daddy. So I looked, blinked, and ting! Hooray! The teddy was Belle's daddy again. There you see, Tig. Belle's daddy is just like a big, friendly teddy bear. So eat up your apple pie. No more worries. I think it's really, really nice. After lunch, when Belle's daddy saw Willie, no. he was scared. It's only a toy spider. You're a toy spider. Thank you so much. When Mummy collected me, I told her all about Belle's dad having a beard. I like going to play with Belle. I love Willie. We've been together since we were me. Hogmanay. When I was little, we had summer, and my birthday, and snowballs, and Christmas. I liked Christmas the best. Oh. But what I really liked was that after Christmas, we went to stay with my granny. Willie came too. Mummy, Daddy and me slept in the sitting room. I slept on a blow-up bed. Mummy and Daddy slept on the sofa. It grew into a bed. It was exciting staying at Granny's after Christmas. One morning, Mummy said, Tig is a very special day today. Do you know what day it is? It's Hogmanay. What Hogmanay? Hogmanay is the very last day of the year. Hogmanay is the very last day of the year. So that means no more days in the universe. So no more days. 
there will be lots more days because tomorrow will be New Year. It's like there's going to be more days. We've got the whole new year. Exciting things. Yeah, I didn't like it being the last day. I liked this year. When we went into the town, it was so exciting. It was like a big party. There was a fun fair in the streets with a big wheel and a carousel. Everything looked magic. And music everywhere. Hogmanay was a special day. Hogmanay was fun. Everyone seemed so happy. No one seemed to mind it was the last day. When it got dark, there was a big procession with fire torches. A band played with bagpipes. Bagpipes. When we got home, Granny had made a steak pie. Steak pie, my favourite. It was so good. Is it still Hogmanay, Mummy? I just tell Hogmanay, Mummy. Yeah, it is, Ted. Isn't that exciting? Mummy, <laughs> look at my tiny teeth. When it was bedtime, Mummy said, Tig, tonight you're going to sleep in Granny's bed. Isn't that exciting? Why am I sleeping in Granny's bed? Because Hogmanay goes long into the night and that is when you and Because me... Hogmanay is a very long day. Then Granny came in with a little tree. This is my special Hogmanay wish tree. Because this is my special Hogmanay wishing tree. Everybody has to make a wish. And once you've made your wish, you pop a fairy onto the tree. What do I wish, Granny? I said. What wish? Well, you could wish for something good to happen in the new year. I don't know, I said. I don't know, Granny. Oh, well, you think about it. And that's your wee fairy to pop on the tree. You have to think, said Granny. I was sad. I didn't want a new year. Wee! Hey, Tig, no need to be sad. Hogmanay might be the last day of one year, but tomorrow is the first day of a brand new year. But what about this year? This year will always be there as happy memories of summer and snowballs and your birthday and Christmas. But tomorrow will be a new year when you can look forward to summer and snowballs and your birthday and Christmas all over again. Yippee! That's why everyone is so excited and happy on Hogman Eye. Everyone is looking forward to the new year. Yes. And what it will bring. So go for it, Tig. Don't be sad. Whoops! Make a wish for a happy and exciting new year. Yes, I thought. I love Hogmanay, but I'll make a wish for a happy new year where we can have summer, snowballs, and my birthday, and Christmas all over again. Before I went to sleep, Auntie Shona came in. I just came to put my wish on the wishing tree. Where's Clive? Where's your boyfriend, Clive? I said. He's not here, I'm afraid. I wish he was. Are you going to wish for that? Why don't you wish for him? I said. Yes, I think I might. Maybe I shall, said Auntie Shona. I've made my wish. And popped a fairy on the tree. Shona and Mummy kiss me night night. When you wake up, Tig, said Mummy, it will be New Year's Day. Good morning, it's going to be New Year's Day. I closed my eyes so my wish would come quickly. When I woke, it was dark. I heard music. I looked into Granny's sitting room. Mummy and Daddy were dancing. Shona was playing her fiddle. Oh, Tig. Oh, sorry, Tig. Is it New Year yet? Is it New Year? I said. No, it's still Hogmanay, said Mummy. Granny's having a wee party. Come and join in. <sighs> we'll go and get the food, Mum. My wish hadn't come true. Is Clive here? I said to Auntie Shona. 
Ed's boyfriend Clive here? No, I'm afraid not. Oh, maybe that's Clive now, Shona. When Shona went to the door, she didn't come back with boyfriend Clive. It's Tom. Oh. Shona came back with a man I didn't know. Tom comes from next door, Tig. He's got a wonderful singing voice. Shona wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. Our wishes hadn't come true. Hey, Tig, some wishes can take a long time. Especially when you wake up in the night. But my wish hasn't come true. You've wished for a happy and exciting new year. But you have to wait for a new year to arrive first. New year can't happen just like that. We have to wait until it's exactly the right time. New year will arrive when all the clocks strike 12 o'clock midnight tonight. But hey, wee! Hogmanay makes the waiting fun. So go for it, Tig. Join in Granny's Hogmanay party. And it won't be long now before Hogmanay turns into New Year. Hooray! Yes, I thought. Hogmanay makes the waiting for New Year fun. On we go, heel for heel and toe for toe. Granny and me and Shona dance together. Then Mummy and Daddy came in with some party food. Haggis! The haggis. <laughs> the haggis looked funny. Suddenly Daddy said, Nearly New Year! It's nearly midnight. Ten! Nine! We eight, all counted backwards. Two! One! Happy New Year! Everyone kissed and hugged. Outside fireworks shot up all over the place. Then the doorbell rang. It was Clive. Auntie Shona was so pleased. Granny was pleased too. When Clive gave her a lump of coal. This will bring us luck, too. Mm -hmm. I showed Willie to Clive to say Happy New Year. <laughs> it's only a tall spider. <laughs> then Tam from next door sang. And never brought to mind Should old acquaintance be forgot And all Willie sang too sign. Remember all the friends you have And all the things you've done Remember all the friends you have And all the fun to come Shona and Clive were happy. All our Hogmanay wishes had come true. It was New Year. We'd have summer and snowballs and birthdays and Christmas all over again. And I love Willie. We've been guests since we were here. Harvest supper. When I was little, my friend Duncan had a farm. He had a combine harvester. Duncan's daddy had a farm too. Duncan's daddy had a big, big combine harvester. Duncan's daddy had fields that grew things that were harvested by the combine harvester. One day, we went to Duncan's farm for harvest supper. Daddy said harvest supper was a party. Say yippee for all the things that grew in the farm. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! The harvest supper day was the last day of the harvest and the last day for the combine harvester. Willie came too. Mummy said that all the things for the supper were grown on the farm. Look, Tig, all the food here for the harvest supper has been grown on the farm. So Wheat for the bread. And apples for the apple juice. Apple for the juice. Right, Tig, why don't you go upstairs and play with Duncan and I'll give the big a hand. Good girl. Yes. Duncan was playing on his little farm. I drove the tractor. I collected the hay bales. Deep break for the farmers. 
Then Duncan's mummy gave us juice and Aussie flapjacks. Those are Aussie flapjacks, and guess what? The oats are grown here on the farm. Mummy said the Aussie flapjacks were grown on the farm too. The Aussie flapjacks were so good. I wanted to see them harvested. Outside, Duncan's daddy drove off on his big, big combine harvester. Come on, said Mummy. Harvest time. I wanted to see the Oti flapjacks. I was so excited. Daddy wanted to make a scarecrow. We watched as Duncan's daddy drove the big, big combine harvester. But I couldn't see any Oti flapjacks. We watched as the combine emptied grain. But I couldn't see any Oti flapjacks. We watched as straw came out of the back, but I couldn't see any Oti flapjacks. OK, time to make a scarecrow, said Daddy. Where are the Oti flapjacks? Where are the Oti flapjacks? In the kitchen, in the kitchen said Mummy. They, they grow in the fields. No, just the oats for the Oti flapjacks grow in the fields. No Oti flapjacks. Hey, Tig. It's not nice when you expect to see something and then you don't. No Oti flapjacks. Especially if they're Oti flapjacks. But sometimes, when we don't quite understand, things can get mixed up. But Mummy said, Louie. Mummy said that oats grew in the field, not that Oti flapjacks grew in the field. Oti flapjacks don't grow. Oaty flapjacks are made. Oaty flapjacks are made from the oats that grow. What we can see is the oats that grow being harvested. That's the fun. The oat grains poured into the trailer. And then we have the leftover straw dropped out of the combine harvester to make the scarecrow. <coughs> So go for it, Tig. Have some harvest fun. Make a scarecrow. Yes, I thought. I'm going to have some harvest fun now. I'm going to help make the scarecrow. We all collected the leftover straw from the combine harvester. We had fun stuffing old clothes. We tied the stuffed clothes to a pole. We filled an old pillowcase with straw too. Yeah. There we go. Right, let's have a wee look. Duncan's mummy drew eyes. I drew a mouse. That's excellent. That's brilliant. We carried the scarecrow back to the farm. We were having the harvest supper in a shed. Daddy popped the scarecrow inside. My hat. Lots of people came to the harvest supper. The giggly lady brought some eggs. Everyone brought something. Vegetables, honey, sunflowers, pictures. My friend Louise brought a picture of a sandcastle. Mummy pinned it up next to my picture of the sea. Duncan's mummy gave us all a corn dolly made of straw. I had one and Louise had one. Duncan's daddy finished harvesting. Everything had been harvested. Now we could have our harvest supper. I told Louise that the harvest supper was all grown on the farm. Everything that we're eating is grown on the farm. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, can I propose a toast to the farmer Duncan and to the harvest? The harvest! After supper, it was time to take our scarecrow to the fields. When I looked for my corn dolly, Louise had taken it. Louise, this is my corn dolly. That is yours. Yours, mine. 
the one nearest to my bread, that's Louise. Lu Louise, that's my corn dolly. No, I think it's mine. Louise is taking my corn dolly. Daddy, Louise has my corn dolly. No, but isn't that your one? No, that's Louise's. But they're exactly the same. No, no, no. It's just a little thing. Don't worry about it. Hey, Tig, when you know you're right, it's not fair that someone else thinks you are wrong. Louise has my corn dolly. But Louise is quite sure she's right too. Who's right? Who's wrong? Well, who can say? Just everyone looks in different ways. Whee! One way you'll see the darkness, one way you'll see the light. Depends which way you're looking, if it's sunrise or the night. One way you'll see the waves break, one way you'll see the sand. Depends which way you're looking, by the sea or land Hey, stop spoiling all the fun and messing up the day What matters most is getting on and joining in the play There's right and wrong and wrong and right and what will be will be Now no more angry feelings Let's agree to disagree One way you'll see a rainstorm One way the sun will shine Depends which way you're looking One thing, and Louise does another. But I didn't want to mess up the day. I wanted to join in the fun. Daddy put up the new scarecrow in a field. The scarecrow might frighten crows, but the scarecrow seemed scared of Wooly. It's only a toy spider. Supper. I like my corn dolly and I love Wooly. We've been scared since we were three. Getting better. You're not hungry. When I was little, I got ill. I didn't want any tea. And I hurt all over. What's wrong? I don't feel very well. Oh. Mummy took my temperature. Oops, you're a bit hot, Teg, said Mummy. Let's get you to bed. I didn't feel well. Hello. When Daddy came home, he came to see me. Are you OK? You OK, Teg? Just got a bit of a temperature. No, I said. I don't feel well. Wooly cuddled in beside me. I fell asleep. When I woke up next morning, Mummy looked at me in a funny way. I know what's wrong with you. You've got chicken pox. I see what's wrong with you, Teg, said Mummy. You've got chicken pox. I look like a speckledy thing with little red spots. We'll have to get you better, said Mummy. In the day, Mummy read me lots of stories. My spots itched. Mummy put nice cool stuff all over the spots. I even had spots in my mouth. Mummy gave me lollies. Mummy made me lots of mashy meals and sloppy drinks. This one is Bernard. Bernard and <laughs> At night, Mummy gave me puppet gloves to wear so I didn't scratch. I like my puppet gloves. When Daddy came home, we played. We built things on the table. Every day my spots didn't itch. Quite so much. 
Honoré. Soon I was painting and drawing and doing things myself. Sometimes I felt a bit better. Sometimes I didn't. One day, Mummy said, Tig, I think you're getting a bit better. Would you like Angel round to play? Tig, would you like Angel to come and play? Yes, please. And guess what? She's got chicken pox as well. Yeah. <laughs> Angel's got chicken pox too, said Mummy. I was excited. I got all my toys out for Angel to play with. I played jumping from cushion to cushion. Suddenly, I didn't feel well again. I didn't want to see Angel. The doorbell went. That'll be Angel. There's Angel. I don't want to see anybody because I don't feel very well. No, I said. I don't want to see Angel. Hey, Tig, getting better can take a long time. Sometimes you feel up, sometimes you feel down. Sometimes you feel wobbly, sometimes you feel strange. Getting better is like doing everything for the first time all over again. Whee! Like walking in the street. Or going back to school. Or seeing Angel again. But every time you do something new again, you'll feel a little bit better. So go for it, Tig. Say hi to Angel. It'll make you feel like your old self again. Yes, I thought. I want to be my old self again. You've got spots. I want to see my friend. I want to get better. Angel and me played. When Mummy saw Willy with spots... <gasps> oh! It's only a toy spider. Oh. I like getting better. <laughs> ben, 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 ben. I love Willy. We've been scared since we were me. I don't smile. Get your photo taken, you? When I was little, I went to nursery school every day. Willie came too. One day, a man was coming to take our pictures. You're going to look so pretty. Mummy wanted me to look pretty. Oh, you do have a pretty new dress, said Claire, my nursery teacher. Something very exciting's happening today, isn't it? Claire said, because the man was coming to take our pictures. So, I think we should put our aprons on to keep clean. We had to keep clean. When we went outside, we took our aprons off and put on our coats. I found a puddle. I had fun jumping in the puddle. When I came back inside, I wanted to paint. Take a look at your socks. I'm going to have to get you some clean ones. Oh dear, said Claire. Your socks are all wet and muddy. I painted a hand painting. Claire likes my painting. Oh. Oh no, your dress. Oops, I forgot to put my apron on. My dress was covered in paint. Claire gave me some new clothes to wear. The man came to take our pictures. When the man finished clattering, he started taking photos. We took it in turns to have our picture. Say, so you'll have to wait, Hi, said Claire. Mummy's coming with some clean clothes. I didn't want to wait. I didn't want to change my clothes. I wanted my picture now. I felt grumpy. Mummy arrived. She had another dress. Claire fiddled with my hair. I felt grumpy. If she doesn't want to change, it doesn't matter. Never mind, said Mummy. If she's happy in those clothes. But I wasn't happy. I still felt grumpy. Who's next then? Next, said the man. I sat on the chair. Are you going to give me a great big smile? Smile, said the man. You sure? I don't, don't smile, smile, I said. Okay then. 
The man pressed the camera. Next, said the man. Are you next? I watched the other children having pictures. Whoa! I no one was grumpy, but I was grumpy. Hey Tig, it's not nice feeling grumpy. But there are so many little things that can make you feel grumpy. Brushing hair, pinchy hair slides, changing clothes, waiting for things to happen. Everything not being quite how you want it to be. But what can make you feel even grumpier is a grumpy face. And a grumpy face makes everyone else feel grumpy too. But if you smile, all the grumps will go away. Give a smile and make your grumpies go away. Give a smile and you'll feel happy all the day. Give a smile and all your grumpies will turn into your happies. Give a smile and make your grumpies go away. Go for it, Tig. Give a big smile for everyone. Yes, I thought. I don't want to feel grumpy anymore. I want to smile. Make everyone feel happy again. So I sat on the chair and gave the biggest smile ever. When the man saw Wooly, he didn't smile. It's only a tight spider. Oh, I love smiling. Mummy loves my smiling. Oh, look, that's a lovely picture of you, Tig. Especially in the picture. And I love Wooly. I love Wooly and Wooly loves me. We've been together since we were wee. He's my